This is the 6 o'clock News Watch. Good evening. A verdict has just been reached in the trial of accused murder of Lonnie Walker. News Watch 10's Mel Taylor is at the Dade Courthouse with that verdict. Lonnie James Walker, as to count one of the indictment, second degree murder with a firearm, as a lesser included offense, guilty. In Florida, more than anywhere else, the sight of judges and lawyers, witnesses and juries in the courtroom carrying out the judicial process has become common on the evening news. For more than two years now, cameras have had the right to be present, the same right that has always been granted to reporters and to the public. Cameras in the courtroom did not come easily in Florida. It took five years and a lot of explaining, negotiating and legal battling in court and out. The battle was led by Post Newsweek, the owners of WPLG, Channel 10 in Miami. To keep reality from people uh, doesn't seem to me to be very productive. Sandy Dallembert is the attorney who argued Post Newsweek's case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. He says the Florida experience shows that the presence of cameras does not make it more difficult for a defendant to receive a fair and impartial trial. That the cameras were not disruptive. They were not the kind of bright light... Uh, noisy and disruptive kind of, uh, of uh, uh, television coverage that you might see at some news conferences or civic clubs or even investitures uh, of judges. All the other arguments that are made against cameras are arguments that are also can be made uh, equally powerful against sketch artists or even a, um, a newspaper reporter sitting there with a pad. There is a lot of support for this argument in Florida, even among many people who at first were opposed to cameras in the court. Judge Gerald Weatherington has been on TV in Miami just about every evening lately. He is the judge in a controversial civil case being heard there, and he has become a supporter of cameras in the courtroom. Well, I think that I was concerned, and a lot of other people were concerned, by the possibility that jurors uh, or witnesses or other participants in the trial might be uh, influenced improperly uh, by the presence of the electronic coverage. I would say that overall, uh, we've accommodated well to the, to the electronic media in the courtroom, and that in most instances, I think it can be accomplished uh, without undue dangers. The courts and the news media have worked out strict rules for cameras. Only one is allowed inside. Extra lights are not permitted. The camera crew assigned must provide its material to any TV station that wants it. The picture is transmitted to another room where crews can plug in and record whatever goes on in the courtroom. The arrangement has received high marks from judges, lawyers, and the reporters who cover the courts. And supporters of camera coverage say the public has also been well served. I think to the extent that your citizens are more informed and are more familiar with the judicial process, they tend to develop more confidence in it. Television, when it's not allowed in the courtroom, will still get some pictures. And what you'll see at night when you hear news of, uh, of our justice system is you'll see news of, uh, you see pictures of uh, cameramen walking backwards down corridors, taking pictures of other cameramen walking backwards, uh, and a defendant's in there somewhere and microphones are being poked at them, and it's very disorderly scene. There are critics, fewer than before, but many just as vocal as ever. Miami defense attorney Joel Hirschhorn unsuccessfully argued against cameras in the courtroom when the issue went before the U.S. Supreme Court last year. Television cameras do not contribute one bit to the overall purpose of a trial, which after all is the search for the truth, which is really has the state or has the government met its burden of proof in this case. Putting a television camera in the, in the courtroom does nothing except feed the American public's appetite for the sexy or the salacious. I mean, that's what's going on in Atlanta. Hirshhorn says the media has focused its attention only on celebrated cases. The Ronnie Zamora trial, the Theodore Bundy case, both cases involving vicious murders. Good copies, says Hirshhorn. He says the presence of cameras affects juries and witnesses sometimes in alarming ways. Mitch, we had a situation here in Miami where a witness testified for the state reluctantly, and she was literally banned from her community because her testimony was unpopular but true in her community. Had a sketch artist sketched her face and shown it, she might have gotten away without being recognized. But In the summer of 79, one of the primary topics of conversation in Florida and around the country was the Ted Bundy case, a flamboyant defendant accused of two murders, the victims, young people. 
In this case, college co-eds. A community enraged and angered, so much so that the trial was moved from Tallahassee, where the crimes occurred, to Miami. Bundy was considered a possible suspect in many other murders, and as a result, his trial drew national attention. As you can see, the Bundy trial two years ago here at the Metropolitan Justice Building in Miami bears a number of similarities to the upcoming Wayne Williams trial. And as a result of a Florida State Supreme Court ruling just a couple of months before that case was to go to court, the Bundy trial would be open to TV cameras, no matter what the prosecution or the defense had to say. And there were objections. Bundy himself claimed in pretrial hearings that camera coverage of the case would make it harder for him to receive a fair trial. Because the news media cannot react, behave responsibly, because they cannot report accurately, because they report matters which are inadmissible, because they prejudice the community. When this court has the power now in advance of the causing of the risk to avoid that risk. But the camera stayed, and today the judge in that case, Ed Cowart, says it posed no problems. They were taken out of the halls where they didn't attack witnesses <laughs> and attack jurors or what have you as they came from the courtroom. Uh, there was no question about the validity of what they were reporting because it actually took place. We were able to be more orderly in the process uh, and more open in the process. The mob scenes were taken out of the courtroom and the halls and put into this room. The hundreds of news people who covered the trial watched the proceedings on TV monitors. They prepared their stories here. They called their editors here. Instead of a lot of commotion in the courtroom, there was order, and the commotion was several floors away. Bundy claimed the mere presence of the camera would affect the proceedings. Witnesses would act differently, so would prosecutors. The prosecutor in the case says not so. I really couldn't see any uh, problem at all with the witnesses or with the jurors. Uh, uh, the participants of the trial, uh, you know, lawyers themselves are going to uh, make their comments and their statements and their arguments as they will anyway. And uh, basically it, it became a situation where I think the camera was really ignored while it was in the courtroom. They are less distractive, in my opinion, than the sketch artists. It's fascinating to watch sketches develop, and they're very talented people. The defendant does not agree. His appeal is in part based on the camera in the court, an issue he raised the day he was sentenced. The coverage of the news media has been a constant threat to me and my attorney's an attempt to prepare a defense. It has jeopardized and I think in fact succeeded in influencing the final outcome of this case. Miami defense attorney Joel Hirshhorn is a staunch opponent of cameras in the court. He says the Bundy trial points out one of the dangers. Made, the media made a celebrity out of Bundy because of the presence of cameras in the courtroom. Bundy elected to conduct his own trial and he had a great time doing that because he knew he was being televised nationally. Media did for Bundy what he couldn't do for himself. It made him a lawyer. But others involved in the case say they were pleased with the coverage. They call it accurate and fair. Judge Cowart says when it comes to accuracy and fairness, he would rather rely on the camera than on reporters forced to paraphrase a full day's testimony.